This is just a quick video to show how to do the first four steps of the watering jug number two tutorial. Jug number two is similar to jug number one with a few important differences. We learned how to make jug number one by first making a boundary for the main jug, evolving a handle, cutting away some excess material on the jug and the handle, then cutting away a curve that represented what the final shape of the top edge of the jug would be, and then building a boundary to bridge the handle and the jug. The key concept here is that the jug, when the boundary is made, has to have more boundary than we actually plan on having in the end. So we have to go up to some imaginary top plane and later on cut away the excess material using a curve in our layout sketch. This works well, but there's one little downside. Before we make the cut, the top of our boundary or loft looks like this. After we make the cut, we see that it's shrunk in size quite a bit. The problem is that we don't know ahead of time what this shape is going to be when we are going to make the cut. That's because this cut is going down through ever-changing profiles in our boundary. It would be nice to know ahead of time and be able to control exactly what this shape is going to be from the very start rather than having to guess at what this shape will be and possibly having to go back and constantly change our profile sketches to get something that we're happy with in the end. That's what the Jug 2 tutorial is all about. Looking at our starter file for Jug 2, we have layout sketches which look very much the same as what they did for Jug 1. The only difference is that this particular profile at the top actually represents what we want the final shape of the Jug area to look like once this cut has been made. In fact, we aren't even going to make a cut here in a jug boundary, as you'll soon see. In jug one, we made the jug boundary by using a profile here, here, and an oversized profile at the top. Now what we're going to do is use a profile here, here, and instead of going to a profile up at the top, we're actually going to make our boundary go to a surface of a temporary block. I'm going to start this by creating a copy of my profile sketch on this top plane. This represents exactly what I want the jug to look like when it's finished and viewed from the top. And here's the unusual aspect of this. What I'm going to do is create a temporary block with this sketch. I'm going to extrude up a little bit and extrude downward. I'll just make this one inch upward. This is an arbitrary dimension here. And in direction two, I just want to make sure that I go down past the bottom this curve. So I can make this about four inches or I could go down to a point here if I want. Whatever I want to do as long as I am past this curve as we shall soon see. Now on my front plane, draw a new sketch. I'm going to copy this line into it. I'm going to use that to cut the bottom off of this block. Flip the side to cut. Now I have a block which has a curvy bottom and a curvy top. This cut edge on the outside is going to represent the shape of the jug 
at its top lip. This edge is the same shape we would have had if we had projected this curve with this curve. Now this starter file provides copies already of all the different profiles you need to use in the boundary and all the guide curves. So I'm going to hide these sketches up here. What we're going to do is make a new boundary that uses this profile, this profile, and this face. So not only can we make a boundary going up to a flat face, we can make boundaries go up to curved faces. So let's go ahead and do that. For some reason this wants to twist around, so I'll just drag this point to here. And then select this face. And for direction 2, I will select the guide curves. To make this a little easier to see, I'm going to go down here and turn off my curvature combs. It might be easier to select the guide curves from the feature tree. Now here's the important thing. So normally we always have merge result checked. We're going to uncheck merge result so that this boundary we are about to make is not glued to this temporary block. Make sure you do not uncheck merge tangent faces because that's going to affect the shape of the boundary. Now we see that the top edge of our boundary exactly matches the shape of our temporary block. So what we've done is created a boundary that has a very controlled shape along this edge, both controlled from this view and controlled from this view. So we know ahead of time exactly what this shape is going to be without having to find out what it's going to be by making a cut like we did with Jug 1. Now if we look at the solid bodies folder we see we have two bodies. One is our temporary body one is the boundary that we actually care about. And we have two bodies because we unchecked the merge box when making the boundary. Now what we want to do is just get rid of this temporary body because we don't need it anymore. We'll identify which is the body here in the solid bodies folder. We know it's this one here. It's named Cut Extrude 1, which is simply the last feature that was added to that boundary. That's how they named these solid bodies in the solid body folder. I'm going to right click on that body and go to Delete Body, green check. And that deletes the body and creates a feature in the feature tree. This is not the same as deleting the feature itself that created the body because if we did that we would lose all of the information that created it originally. The information that creates this body still exists up here higher up in the feature tree. The delete body is actually a feature itself and we can enroll back in front of it and again see that temporary body. This takes care of steps 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the jug tutorial. The rest of the steps in this tutorial are the same as jug 1 and I will not repeat them for this video. So this gets us back to step 4. Step 5 is adding the handle, cutting the handle and the jug away. In this case also cutting away this top edge of the handle for the matching curve the bridging boundary, the mirror, bottom fillets, shell, and completing fillets.